plate tectonics and mineral deposits. Plate tectonics is a theory developed by Alfred Wagner, who said that the Earth's outer crust is in movement. So he developed the idea of Pangaea, which was a supercontinent, and that it broke apart by these plates separating. Um, these plates are located in the lithosphere, which is part of the upper mantle and crust, which make of the Earth. Um, so these plates are the lithosphere, and the asthenosphere is below it in the mantle and is weak, which allows it for the lithosphere to float on top or the plates to float on top. Um, seismic activity um, is located between these boundaries, these plates, um, as they either collide one on one, like head to head, or one subducts underneath another, or they slide past each other. So these types of um, collisions, if you will, are called divergent, convergent, and transform plate boundaries. So a divergent plate boundary is when two plates are being pulled apart. So it starts as two continental plates being pulled apart. And as they pull apart, they create a rift valley, which you can see in the picture. So as they pull apart, magma rises up. And as that new, or the, as that magma arises and cools when it reaches the surface, it um, hardens and creates this ridge, or this rift valley, I mean, excuse me. Um, and this rift valley generally becomes a path for water. So once it has water in it and it continues to spread, it becomes a mid-ocean mid -ocean ridge, which um, are, it's new, it's new, so it's always new. So as the new magma comes in and cools, it keeps going. So it's like a bookshelf. So as new magma comes in, it pushes the older ones to the side and the newer ones in the middle or along the mid-ocean ridge. So how fast are these plates being pulled apart? GPS shows that um, the fastest moving one is in South America and the East Pacific Rift, um, or the Rise, excuse me, which moves, moves 0.7 inches per year. And the slowest moving at 0.04 inches Per year in Africa's Great Rift Valley. Earthquakes do occur at these, are these ridges, um, but they're very shallow because the rocks, well the places where earthquakes occur are where weak, cool rocks are, which is only about three miles down in a divergent boundary. Convergent plate boundaries are when two plates meet head to head and one has to subduct. So an oceanic continental, as you can see in the picture, it creates a trench. So as it, the subducting oceanic crust goes down, it creates the deep valley or a trench in water. Um, and then also as it's being subducted, the magma rises from the subducting and creates this volcanic arc, which is on the continental crust. Also the place where the, the plate is meeting the magma is called the subduction zone um, and always when oceanic continental crusts combine or meet the oceanic is going to subduct underneath the continental because it is more dense so the more dense plate is going to subduct so just like in an oceanic continental 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 when two continental plates collide they are going to also make almost like a volcanic arc, but instead of rising up, uh, it makes a mountain range instead because the two collide and it goes up. Um, also, the more dense plate is going to subduct beneath it. And then when two oceanic crusts meet, it can cause an island arc, which has volcanoes on it. However, um, it can also have back arc spreading, which is when the more dense plate or the older plate is so dense that it eventually collapses underneath of itself and creates a back arc basin. So that's a convergent boundary. Transform plate boundaries are a major flat fracture in the lithosphere. So it's when two um, plates slide past each other and it's at these plates that you have transformed faults which are the major fractures in lithospheres. Um, they conserve each other so they don't destroy or make like a convergent divergent boundary. They just slide past each other. 
However, earthquakes are related with transform boundaries as well. Um, as they slide past each other, they kind of grind. And as that grind occurs, um, the rocks are very rigid and can get locked in like teeth, like in a gear or something, and get jammed. And then when they eventually they keep spreading and spreading and spreading and they're still locked, and when they eventually snap and release, that wave is very seismic and can wreak havoc. Um, so transform boundaries also occur ocean and land, as this one's more continental, it can occur in the ocean too, but it's more on land. Or excuse me, it's more in water. Um, but continental transforms include those of the San Andreas Fault in the Dead Sea. But as you can see in the Dead Sea, the transform fault created a depression so wide that water got into it. So what is an ore? An ore is a special type of rock that is composed of a certain type of valuable mineral. For instance, gold, silver, titanium, tin, uh, or copper, which this is copper. Um, there's three or four types, excuse me, of ores. There's magmatic ores, carbonate, alkalines, metamorphic, and sedimentary. So a magmatic ore is formed by the cooling crystallization of volcanic activity or like magma. So it's an igneous process and it forms um, iron, copper, and nickel. And then also another igneous form is that um, carbonate alkaline which, however, is the same process, cooling and crystallization, but not of volcanic activity, but it's still an igneous process. So, of course, that leaves metamorphic and sedimentary rocks left. So the metamorphic process is called a metamorphic ore, which is made from metamorphic processes, which makes um, lead, zinc, and silver, and then sedimentary makes gold, platinum, and tin. So mining is used to extract these ores, and the ore is very, has to be very um, economically willing for the company or the person that is mining, because if it's not big enough or there's not enough of it, they're just mining, wasting all this money and time, drilling for relatively nothing. So this is an example of a strip mine, which is uranium. Um, there's different types of mining, but this is strip mining for ore. But where is ore located? Ore is going to be located along um, areas with magmatism, or yeah, magmatism, excuse me. And so at a divergent boundary, this occurs at a continental rift or a, a mid-ocean ridge. So at a continental rift, ore deposits are formed during the beginning. Um, as magmatic concentrates seep through the crust and cool and crystallize, it forms this layered igneous complex which houses the ores. So as you can see, the magma rises and then it would get in that continental crust and harden. And when that magma reacts and melts the crust too, and then eventually hardens, it's rich of, um, of minerals and deposits. Also at a mid-ocean ridge, you can see um, these are called smokers. So as the mid-ocean ridge is constantly magmas rising and forming new crust, as the ridge um, has cracks in it, it's going, water is going to seep down in there. And as the water seeps down closer and closer to the point where the magma is and where the magma is melting the rock, that water is going to heat up and rise back towards the surface of the, like the ridge where it's open. And then all those minerals are going to interact with it on the way up of the melted rock and create a smoker, just like this, which is rich in sulfides. So when that sulfide um, settles onto the ocean floor, excuse me, um, it creates this sulfide bed and um, it creates this rich area. Um, also, back at the continental rift environments, the lava or the magma when it rises can also be chemically weathered. And as that chemical weathering breaks down the magma, the magma is going to have nutrients in it as well. But once they get chemically like, reacted with and dissolve, if you will, 
um, and mixes with sediments, and these sediments are going to be moved into the basin, the rift basin. So, like divergent boundaries that convergent uh, boundaries, they um, deposits occur at magmatic regions as well. So, a magmatic arc or a back arc. Um, so, at a convergent plate, when it's subducted beneath each other, it's rich in minerals, which are like being melted by the magma as it gets closer and closer to Earth's core. So the fluids are going to react with this and rise and eventually harden, causing a mantle uh, wedge, which is the green area. It's a little hard to tell. Um, and this mantle wedge is going to be rich of minerals because it mixes with all of the minerals in the subducting plate, as long with the fluids that are going to rise with it as well. So this is how you can tell if um, two plates or the plate is old or new or the subduction zone is old or new because if it has a wedge it's going to be fairly older, it's going to be subductive longer, but the newer ones aren't going to have that wedge. So that's where you're going to mine or for ore is that wedge because that's where all your rich deposits are going to be. And a back arc environment as you can see on the right hand side of the picture, you have pretty much a mid ocean ridge. So, as it goes and separates, it also creates another smoker. So, like these smokers, however, they're different because they deposit a different type of sulfide, a Karuko type, in Japan Sea. Um, which is so, as that the smoker works, like I explained earlier, it's the same process as the water seeps through the rocks of the mid-ocean ridge. It reacts with the magma and melted rock and rises and it's going to leave a sulfide um, bed as well. So they, this is hydrothermal activity. So that's pretty much where your mineral deposits are going to be. They don't occur at transform boundaries due to they don't have magmatic um, regions. Only convergent and divergent regions do. So that's where you're going to find your minerals. However, it's hard to mine at a mid-ocean ridge because it's so deep. Um, so yeah, here's my citations of all my pictures. Thanks for watching.